everybody, it's me, Vic. So I'm making a video in regards to social callouts while using your Stream Deck, but not just for OBS, but a plugin called Vertical. Um, this plugin is really awesome. And as you can see, this is my layout, right? Like right now I'm not on screen in there because my camera is being used currently here in this recording. Um, but the, the cool thing is when I run my particular CTAs, it is basically going to do the subscribe and the Twitch Prime and all that, right? Um, which I think is really awesome. And uh, when when we come back to it, you didn't see it go off on the screen, but you're seeing it go right above my head, right? Because my OBS layout is very different than my vertical layout. In my vertical layout, it would look like this. We're gonna give it a minute. And then it would wait two seconds and then it would roll the next one, which is going to be this. Now, I say looping, but it's not looping at all. It's basically going to be something custom you have to do in Stream Deck and for a duration of time. Um, and that is going to be something we talk about here in Stream Deck. Okay, so as you can go. see, when I select my pedal, it switched to something else because I do use profile switching within my particular pages. Um, on this one, this is going to be right here the the actions that I select. So in my regular OBS scene, I have it right here where it runs, just the CTA on OBS. Now I've realized that when you're grouping things in OBS here, for example, I have a camera right here. Um, and I tried to group this camera in here. That's why you see things completely itemized with the exception of audio. I can actually group the audio and not have to worry about it because I have what I want on and what I don't want off. Um, and I've made it simple for my needs when it comes to streaming as well as recording. Um, I actually use a different layout when I'm recording, but since I'm using my vertical scene, like when I do my clips or when I do a Twitch clip, um, it is the exact same clip. It's just that the layout is very different here in vertical, right? But I also wanna run the CTAs, which means my, uh, follow on Twitch and the uh, subscribe with the uh, Twitch Prime. I don't like to do those things during my stream where I say it, like, don't forget to follow, don't forget to subscribe. I, for me, it's more of let's just have fun in the moment. Like I, I literally live stream for fun, but when I'm making content, it's entirely different, right? So like you usually see the little thing at the very end. Um, when it comes to grouping things though, like we're getting back <laughs> to here, um, I realized that grouping means that I would have to move stuff around. So as you can see, I had my camera grouped, right? Well, if I move my camera here, which I really don't wanna do because then I have to go over here and reconfigure it, wherever I move it in vertical, it's gonna completely offset it in OBS. So grouping was uh, what I learned a no-no to do in, in vertical. And as much as I like grouping things, there's certain things you can group and certain things you don't wanna group. For example, I have the, the selfies, right? This, this cute little adorable thing. If I, since they're grouped, I can move this wherever I wanted. Um, I'm preferring to keep it like right there by the cat though. Um, but th that's where groups come in handy is like when you're doing something on the particular scene that you know isn't going to be affected in the other area. Um, and since this is my live scene right here, and I can probably show you all that here if I turn the cover off, you see an infinite window of an infinite window, which is why I have the cover on. One, it's the game I'm gonna play tonight, but um, two, I really didn't wanna have y'all see stuff that was gonna drive y'all maddening <laughs> while making this video. Um, so focusing on the vertical sources right here, and yes, you can snap out, snap them back in, same thing with vertical. Um, I moved it all the way because if I did this, y'all wouldn't get a really good view of vertical, but that's what vertical looks like, right? So it's capturing the scene. Uh, vertical basically is copying what I have here because of the sources that I set up. Um, so that's why I'm able to show you the way that I'm able to show you everything on vertical. But since we're primarily focusing on vertical right now, I have my CTAs run like this when I do the clip. Um, and we're gonna talk about the recipe here very shortly because this recipe, uh, I feel, is gonna be handy for those who are like me, where I have a Stream Deck pedal from Elgato, and I tap, and I use mine on the very far right, so I tap that button with my foot, and that's when I am creating a clip, right? Not just a Twitch clip, but a vertical clip. Um, and I will show you about uh, how to set that up here in just a minute. 
But I also have this one running right after. So like I run one CTA, I wait two seconds, and then I run the other. Um, and what I wanted them to do is run simultaneously while I was streaming so I didn't have to go in here and manually do one after the other. Well, I was getting frustrated because when I was grouping them, I realized they're completely offset. They're not where I put them. So I had to ungroup everything. And I was like, okay, this isn't working the way that I wanted it to work. And uh, I think this was after a, a recent vertical update. So I was like, okay, well, how do I fix this? And so I did. Um, I realized I'm going to have two sources and I thought, okay, great. I'm going to have to create two different, um, things to run CTAs for two different things. Um, so they're not going to be exact, but I realized I was wrong in that. Um, so what I did was I copied and pasted what my CTA was for my live scene. And then once I, uh, so we're going to do that right now, just so I can show you, oops, wrong one. <laughs> we're going to copy here and then we're going to paste. Right, so what I did was instead of going to my vertical scene, I could switch this to my live scene and I could run the CTA. So basically it would run one CTA, the other CTA simultaneously for a duration of seven seconds because that's how long the CTA does run. And then, and to find that out, in case you're wondering how do I find out how long my media source is, there is this amazing little, uh, thing that pops up here and for some reason I cannot find it. You know what, we can probably do it for this one. Oh, it's running on the other side. You know what I just realized? Because I am recording, it's probably not gonna let me see that. But there is this bar where it has like a little play button and you're able to see how long it runs. And when you're able to see that, I'm gonna check it over here. No, it's not going to show me while I'm recording. <laughs> Anyways, it's a bar, right? So you get to see how many seconds. And if you're good at math, you're able to do it very quickly. In this case, I learned that this particular CTA that I run, runs seven seconds. Um, and then the Twitch one, the Twitch Prime one, that one is going to run a total of nine seconds. So what I did was after I run one for seven seconds, I turned them both off, right? Well, both of them. Then I turned them off. And then I wait two seconds and then I start up the next CTA. And then that one runs for nine seconds. And then I turn them off simultaneously. And then I wait two seconds and then I have my vertical create a clip. And then I have my Twitch create a clip. So I'm able to do both clips at the same time and I'm able to run both CTAs at the same time. Um, and hopefully that helps you in case you're struggling with well, how do I get something where do I, you know, where I want it exact on one scene and then get it in my vertical scene that same way without having to group it? Because when you try to group things, it literally is going to move things around. And I, I don't want to do that because then I have to go and refix everything <laughs> if I do it again. But um, that's why I wanted to show you that grouping is only essential. Like if you're doing it for your audio, if your audio hasn't changed from your OBS scene here, it shouldn't change in your vertical scene. Um, if you have certain things in the background or certain things that you've already set up, but you want to group them, um, you could do so. Like there, for example, in my, in my start scene, in my start scene, I have here where I have the selfies grouped. So if you see Mochi Gang selfies, I can actually use that exact same group here and it's not going to move it here because it's a completely different scene. Um, and I'm also in my live scene when I'm running vertical. So I didn't have to worry about that at all. I do have to turn this back on from when I go live, but we're going to go back to vertical here. So just to make it simple, you, you don't want to group hardly anything unless you know it's something that's not going to be like your camera or your CTAs. Um, but I hope that this has been helpful. And again, if you need the recipe on how to do it, you're doing a multi-action, right? So you're going to start with your OBS source. And your OBS source is going to be over here. And then you're going to uh, select source visibility because that's where the sources are. Um, and that's going to be a media source. So then you would just select from whichever scene here. You would go to whatever scene you have going on. Uh, I'm not sure why I have a second vertical scene one, but we'll look into that. Um, and then, of course, you select whichever one it's going to fall under. And then whatever your media source or your OBS sources, so that way you can run the multi-action. Um, and then same thing, like I said, you're going to do it for the duration that it runs, and then you're going to turn that same source off. So basically you're copying and pasting uh, each source. 
And you can do that and it makes it so much simpler. Now, if you're not sure how to do a clip to where you save it, here we go, settings. So these are the vertical settings, right? And there's general, um, audio bit rate. Oh, that should be 60 seconds. Yeah, we gotta fix that. Um, and then of course I have them going to my clips, which is going to be a particular folder that I have set up specifically just for vertical clips versus my recordings, which is going to be for my um, OBS or uh, recordings or anytime that I'm doing a video that I need to post. Um, and then of course I can create my own custom hotkey and I decided to use a numpad because I, I rarely use a numpad as it is on my actual um, keyboard here. So I figured that would be a good one to use. And so when I, I run it, basically it runs a hotkey to save the vertical clip. Um, if I were live streaming, it, like for example, if I ever, ever meet the criteria for TikTok to live stream on TikTok, then I would put the server key and all that stuff in here. And then of course it would have the same thing where I'd have to do like a specific hotkey for streaming. Um, and I don't worry about that because I usually post the clips directly to um, TikTok from my PC, which makes it so much easier. Um, and then same thing when it comes to the YouTube uh, shorts as well. And with the YouTube shorts, I've learned you have to literally put the keyword in your description, hashtag shorts, and in your tag shorts. Um, that is the only way that it shows up as a YouTube short for those who are, are wondering how to do that. Um, now advanced, it says use main OBS settings. I do this so that way I don't have to configure all of this because it picks up on everything that I already have set up directly in OBS. Um, and the same thing is gonna be for the recording. So it, it picks up on uh, use main OBS settings. So I don't have to worry about that at all. And if you ever need help, you can definitely go and join their Discord server and they can guide you on this. Um, but I love this plugin. I am uh, very, very happy using this plugin. But um, if you're ever wondering how to edit this plugin in DaVinci Resolve, you will have to go and set up a preset for it. And when I go and edit, uh, this is the last part of the video that I'm gonna talk about here. But when I go to edit, as soon as DaVinci uh, Resolve loads here, um, you have to actually go in and change a couple of settings because you can't do things by 1080p. It actually is backwards. Um, it is actually 1080 by 1920. So what I will usually do is I go here to my, uh, Project settings. And then I will go to my vertical where it says 1080 by 1920, 60 FPS, and I load presets. And then I just drag and drop my media in here and I'm able to actually edit those clips in vertical, which I think is really very handy. I'm not saving this because I'm not editing anything right now, but I think it's very handy for those who are trying to figure out how to create a vertical clip, how to edit a vertical clip. Um, and if you're wondering what that program is, it is a video editing software. It is free. There is a studio version that's pro that you can buy. It's like 399 plus tax. Um, I use the free version, obviously, <laughs> but I love using DaVinci Resolve um, for Windows users. I, I have to say that I have learned how to use it with ease. And uh, I hope that has been helpful for you all when it comes to one, rolling CTAs simultaneously on your OBS screen as well as your vertical screen, but also editing them. Um, and uh, DaVinci Resolve is a whole different ball game, right? So if you're wanting to learn how to edit, there are some amazing videos here on YouTube that you can uh, watch and they will show you how to edit certain things. Um, and then once you get good at it, you're like, okay, I can add transitions. I can do a lot of different things. And then if you're wanting to do a more pro thing, once you've uh, accumulated the funding to do so, then of course upgrade. I personally haven't yet. I haven't had the need to as my needs are very, very minimalistic when it comes to editing. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. I hope this has been informative for you. 